This video features 17 free vegetable gardening hacks that I use all the time in the garden and I've even thrown in a couple of bonus ones too. And I created this video to celebrate the launch of my new book which comes out today and it's called Grow Food for Free. Imagine being able to grow an abundance of food using only sustainable techniques and be able to enjoy homegrown produce every day of the year at zero cost. Grow Food for Free is packed with everything you need to know to grow food without needing any money and it's suitable for both beginners and experienced gardeners. So get your copy of Grow Food for Free today using the link provided down below so you can unlock a future of free food. Now on to the hacks. Ice cream tubs, yoghurt pots and cream pots make the most amazing free plant labels. Carefully cut pots into strips around 1.5 to 2 centimetres wide and then use a pen to write on the blank side. These plants labels can last for many seasons and it is so easy to collect yoghurt pots from neighbours and family. Use permanent marker for them to be waterproof and suitable to be used not just indoors but also outdoors. One of the coolest ways to grow potatoes is by simply placing them on the surface of a raised bed and then covering thickly with some mulch. This mulch could be something like straw, old hay or autumn leaves. Once the potato plants appear through the mulch, cover them again with more mulch and then let them grow until the plants are ready to harvest, which is around a couple of weeks after flowering, and simply pull away the mulch and pick out the potatoes. You can also try this method just using wood chip as a mulch. Brambles or any other thorny cane offer an excellent instant fence effect to help protect your seedlings from slugs. Cut the canes into 30 centimetre long sections and lay them like a fence around your prized seedlings. You can also stack two to three canes on top of each other and it won't stop every single slug, but I can guarantee that it will make a huge difference. Suburban and rural areas are full of wild brambles that need clearing. So instead of just clearing and burning all of the brambles, we have an excellent use for the canes in our gardens and allotments to help keep slugs away. This won't be suitable for every single climate, but I try and garden in accordance with the weather and I always prioritise sowing seeds and transplanting seedlings during or right before some heavy rain. This means you save yourself the time of watering afterwards and also using up your water storage because the rain will do all of that for you. Fellow YouTuber Steve from The Optimistic Gardener has come up with an excellent way to repurpose pallets into creating our own seed trays. And if you have spare nails or screws lying about or even repurpose the nails from the pallets that you break up, then this can be a free project. Pallets can be found for free in many locations and for example last year I picked up three pallets from a local tennis club. These seed trays have an added benefit of being as large as you want them to be and also plastic free. Create the frame and then nail the planks to the base. Just make sure that the pallets you use have the HT symbol which stands for heat treated and not chemically treated. If you're struggling to create straight seed trenches in the garden, then look no further. Cut a piece of bamboo just under the width of your raised beds and lay it over the surface. Then press firmly down to a desired depth, lift, and you now have a perfectly straight seed trench. This amazing technique can also be done using an old broom handle or a long piece of wood. Another way for creating a perfectly straight line which you can use for creating a seed trench or even for transplanting seedlings is to find two sticks and a bit of string. Tie one end of the string near the top of one of the sticks and plant this stick on a side of your widest raised bed and then roll the string out to the other side and cut it leaving a bit of overhang. Now tie this end of the string to the second stick and then twirl it to the desired length. Both sticks planted at both sides and twirl taut will create a perfectly straight line. Made popular by Charles Dowding, the technique of multi-sowing allows you to grow more plants in less space. And it also means that you need less compost to get them growing. 
For example, beetroot, radish and turnips can be sown four to five seeds to a module and then transplanted. And as the clumps of seedlings grow, they will push away from each other. And multi-sowing also means that sowing and transplanting times are greatly reduced. Cardboard tubes like loo rolls make fantastic biodegradable plant pots to start off your seeds. Peas and beans work especially well and when it comes to transplanting you can place the whole cardboard roll directly in the ground as it will break down which means that your plants will suffer far less transplant shock. Fill the tubes with homemade compost and sow your seeds and then store these in boxes such as old ice cream tubs or crates to prevent the compost falling out. Alternatively, you can create four cuts at the end of one of the tubes and fold them inwards to create a pot. This hack is one of the most satisfying things any gardener can do. Fill an old rain gutter with compost and then sow seeds. This works very well for peas because when it comes to transplanting, create a trench in a raised bed and then slide the seedlings straight from the rain gutter into the trench and they have been instantly transplanted. But this also works really well for other things such as lettuce and salads. A quick bonus hack on the theme of peas. Use Christmas tree branches to create amazing pea supports when you just transplant your seedlings. Collect Christmas tree branches from neighbours and recycling facilities in early January and use to your heart's content. And this also works really well for sweet peas too. One of the most effective ways to easily increase the productivity of your garden is to scrap creating annual planting plans and instead look at monthly planting plans. There are so many benefits to this because a month by month look at the garden means you can plan ahead for when a gap appears so you can sow seeds ready to transplant as soon as you have harvested a crop so you can get two or three different harvests from the same space in one growing season. Using a monthly planting plan also really helps make you feel in control because it is so much simpler to look at what's happening on a month to month basis and it means that the plan that you have is going to be very close to how the garden is laid out at any one point in time. Permaculturalist Bill Mollison devised an excellent way to ensure that your parsnips and carrots would have excellent germination. The trick is to not let the seeds dry out during germination by watering after sowing and then placing a plank over the row of seeds to reduce evaporation and then remove the plank when you see small seedlings begin to appear. If you want to have healthy and strong tomato plants, there is one clever trick to really encourage a deep established root system. After transplanting a tomato seedling and giving it a deep water, don't water the seedling for seven days to encourage the roots to grow in search of water. This then makes a more resilient plant that will also have greater access to nutrients and water as a result. Did you know that you can also grow dried peas and beans as well that you find in the back of your kitchen cupboard? Dried peas can be sown and grown indoors and outdoors and offer a fantastic harvest of not just peas but also pea shoots which are a wonderful addition to any salad. Make sure you soak dried peas for an hour to help them germinate faster. Weeding your garden is not the most enjoyable job but there's a few ways to make it far more effective. Firstly, block out a flexible once a week weeding session to stay on top and then try and weed during the intense midday sun or just before and then leave the weeds that you pull out on the surface of raised beds or on soil to wilt and they will break down and save you a trip to the compost bin. A bonus tip is to use wood chip that can be sourced for free from local arborists as a material that you can lay down and use as pathways around your growing area. After a year or two, the wood chip will have broken down nicely so you can simply scoop the composted wood chip up and mulch your containers and beds with it and then replenish the paths with new wood chip. This is an excellent example of multifunctional gardening and if you want to find out more about this technique then look in the video description. 
a mind hack that works so well when you're feeling a little bit swamped with gardening tasks is to just focus on one thing at a time. Simply choose one task that is higher up on the priority list and start working on it and don't move on to anything else until you have finished that specific task. This really helps focus you and you'll feel much better after finishing that single task because then there is less to be done and the priority that I would choose is a task which will take up a lot of time because when you blow that out of the way suddenly everything feels a lot more doable. If you're not so keen on that, a different mind hack that you can do is prioritise all of the tasks in the garden that will take five minutes or less and do these before you then do anything else. By doing this, it means you can tick off and complete the easy jobs first, one step at a time. For example, pruning a black currant. And getting all of these quick wins will help trick you into feeling very productive. Next time you're in the garden, why not head up with a notebook and make a list of all of the five minutes or less jobs you can think of and then do them one by one because I find checklists are so easy and so useful and it feels great just to tick things off the list. So there you have 17 free vegetable gardening hacks that you can start implementing in your garden right away. And if you found these hacks useful, then you'd love my new book, Grow Food for Free, which is full of loads of different hacks and techniques to really help you grow food without needing to spend any money. If you would like to support the channel and also learn how to drastically reduce costs in the garden, then get yourself a copy of Grow Food for Free today and all of the information and links you need for that are down below in the video description and also in a pinned comment. I really hope you enjoyed this video and let me know if you have a favourite hack or which one you're really looking forward to starting and also if you have any questions or suggestions and I look forward to seeing you again soon in another video. Goodbye.